M4 Mac Mini is undoubtedly one of the best products from last year. And after a huge number of you watched my Mac Mini buyer's guide, I thought I'd just follow up with covering some of the best M4 Mac Mini accessories. Now I'm going to have links down below for everything that I've mentioned, which also means that I couldn't find a sponsor for this video. So um, yeah, if you are interested in anything you see, please click the links down below as they will help support this channel. But these are all the accessories that I use each and every single day with our combined three Mac Minis. We've got one at home, one here, and another one here for my editor as well. Now, the first is one I had a few questions about from my previous videos, and that is the keyboard. Now, this is the K3 Ultra Slim Wireless Mechanical Keyboard from Keychron, and it has been one of my favorite keyboards in a very long time. Like, I'll be honest, I'm quite a big fan of mechanical keyboards, but after using those super slim, like low profile keyboards from, you know, Apple for quite a while, I find the low profile keys so much more comfortable to type on. Now, for a long while now, I've been using the uh, Logitech MX keys, which I still use on my home Mac mini, but the one I use the most, at least in the studio here, is this Keychron. Now, this one has brown switches and sounds really satisfying when, you know, writing out scripts or writing emails. It also has, you know, RGB backlighting which I'm honestly not too fussed about and since it also saps a lot of battery life I tend to leave the backlight switched off a lot of the time but I do like having that option of course to turn them on and it just the lighting on it does look really nice when it's on. Now it does have switches on the back to switch between uh, Mac and Windows because you also get a set of Mac and Windows keys in the box so you can swap the physical buttons around if you wish uh, and there's also a switch at the back to switch between uh, wired, wireless and also the wireless dongle that also comes with the keyboards. Uh, now you can wirelessly pair this with three devices and it works as a wired keyboard too which has been really handy when you know going through the first time setup for these Mac minis is it really needs a, a wired keyboard or you know official Apple wireless keyboards to get through that initial setup. Now next up for me is something that has stood the absolute test of time and that is my choice of mouse. Now it has and probably will forever be the Logitech MX Master. This is the 3S model or you know newer iterations of them when they're released. Now I bought the Magic Mouse and I do use it at home but I like, I kind of loathe it. You know, that horrible design, USB-C connected from the bottom, just really stupid design. Now the Logitech is amazingly comfortable being able to the, you know, fits naturally in the shape of your hand and has easy access to a number of buttons, scroll wheels. You know, you've got the usual left and right clicks the scroll wheel, which has another button on it, which allows it to uh, spin freely or clicks. There's a button near the thumb here where you can um, use it to assign to various different functions like you know, forwards and backwards in a web browser. Also, there's one where your thumb naturally rests and a second scroll wheel, which is also where your thumb sits. Now with the 3S, I believe that it has a quieter click, which I guess is a bit silly when you're pairing it with a mechanical keyboard of any sorts. Uh, but I just love how customizable this mouse is with the Logi Option software. You can, you know, literally create profiles for different applications if you wish. But I just tend to use one profile across everything with the thumb button used to move between spaces on my Mac. Now, something I haven't decided to put back on this year, but I'm going to mention it anyway, and I guess it's kind of more of a monitor accessory. But again, going to throw it in anyway, is the BenQ light bar. Now, I didn't add this since we moved to the new studio space, mainly just because I found my desk getting, you know, just clustered with all of the wires and then needing powering via USB and just more stuff on my desk. So I don't have this anymore, but if you wanted a light bar that sits on top of your monitor and shines down on uh, both your desk and also shining onto the wall behind you, then the BenQ light bar, again, I'll link it down below, is a great solution. It has a wireless controller that just sits on your desk and you can control the, uh, you can switch it on and off, control the brightness, even the color temperature. But yeah, like I said, I've chosen not to include it this time for my Mac. But let's talk about one now that is most definitely an important one, and that is expanding your Mac's storage. Because, well, as many of us know, Apple's upgrade options when it comes to storage, uh, you know, on the Mac Mini across, well, anything really, is ridiculous, as basically any upgrade option is from Apple. So there are a few different options. Now, firstly, there is, you know, the whole cloud versus local storage. Now, for cloud storage, you can use iCloud to offload, you know, a ton of your local data to the cloud. That's one option. I actually do this with Google Drive just because, you know, that's what this business uses to share data. Uh, then there are, of course, you know, other cloud storage services. And I actually made a whole video about those cloud servers, which I'll link probably down below somewhere. Like some of them are super cheap. Some of them are super secure. It just, it totally depends on what you need. And then the second option is another way that's quite potentially uh, maybe an extreme way. 
and that is using a NAS, which is Network Attached Storage, which is basically a bunch of hard drives, which when combined together, gives you a huge amount of storage space, of local storage space. But they also have, you know, other benefits. It is very fast. It's very resilient against any hard drive failures. You know, if you're worried about losing your data, it's also very easy to back up, which I'll touch on more in just a second. But the big reason for a lot of people is that you, you buy it once and it is yours forever. Like you're not having to pay a monthly subscription to access your data. Nobody else has access to your data except you, you know, not Google, not Apple, nobody has access. Now I've been using a, uh, a NAS from Synology for the last probably three or four years now or so. And it has a 10 gig ethernet connection, which I also spec on my M4 Mac mini which means that I can transfer my video footage to the NAS super quickly. But it is not perfect, of course. You do have to uh, regularly check for updates, you know, to install them, to say secure. And it requires a uh, certain level of technical ability to set one up and then maintain it properly as well. And then for me, because I don't want to lose any of my video footage, we also back up to a couple of services. We've got Synology C2 and Backblaze. So right now I am paying a monthly subscription, even though, you know, I'm already paying to store my data locally. But again, you kind of need your data backed up to make sure you're not going to lose it. But the one thing that I feel most people will be interested in, of course, is just grabbing a few external SSDs and quickly adding a few extra terabytes of storage and then, you know, just calling it a day. And that's what I've done on my home Mac mini. Now I've picked up two of these four terabyte crucial SSDs and I just leave them permanently attached to my Mac mini. Now there are a ton of options here, of course. You've got, over the years I've tried uh, the Western Digital, I've used the very popular, you know, Samsung T5 and T7 and T9. But recently I have settled on the Crucial X9 and X10 Pro drives, just the speed, the uh, support on them, the warranty is great, and just the reliability as well, which is very important. But do note that if you have the M4 Pro Mac Mini, then you also have the option to use Thunderbolt 5 external SSDs, which are currently, they're very, very limited, very expensive as to, you know, who's making them as well. But I am working on an updated SSD buyer's guide. So if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about the SSD specifically, then make sure you do subscribe and turn on your notifications to see when that video gets posted. And then just to wrap up the whole like storage section, I am also using Backblaze to back up everything on my Mac mini, mainly because it's like super affordable, like nine bucks uh, per month for unlimited storage. And that also includes any external SSDs that you have connected. Uh, it doesn't cover a NAS drive. I pay a separate monthly fee for that. Again, more monthly fees, but the nine bucks backs up everything on your actual Mac including anything, you know, connected externally via USB. Now, next up, let's talk about docks, because whilst the Mac mini is great, it's still very, very limited in terms of the number of ports that it has to offer. Uh, it has two USB-C ports on the front, three USB-C ports on the back, no USB-A ports. Now, once you've hooked up a few devices like, a, you know, a keyboard, a mouse, uh, you know, if you're using like USB dongles, a webcam, an audio interface, there's really not that much space left, if at all. So I'm using the uh, TS4 dock from Cowdigit to expand those ports, which gives you an extra 18 ports in total. Now that includes a USB-A port on the front, in addition to uh, SD and micro SD slots, which for me, very, very useful for transferring video footage on SD cards. And then on the back, there's a further four USB-A ports, three USB-Cs with two of those supporting Thunderbolt 4. And for those who didn't opt for that 10 gig Ethernet option uh, on your Mac mini, there is a two and a half gig Ethernet port. Now, personally, I don't use the dock much. Like it's mainly for the front SD card slot. But since I'm at the limit now for my Mac mini, I now have space to connect any new devices that I buy in the near future. Now, speaking of devices, let's talk about webcams. Now, quite a while ago, I compared all of the, like, the latest and greatest uh, webcams from the, the most popular C920 Logitech to some of the more uh, modern devices. And I'm also just about to try a couple of different webcams as well. But for now, I have the Insta360 Link 2 and then my editor has the Link 2C, which are basically the same cameras, but one of them has this little gimbal thing, which I'll get onto in just a moment. And actually I have the, the version one Insta360 Link at home, and they are basically what webcams should be. They are high 4K quality, a great autofocus, and just a ton of features like uh, gesture control, a whiteboard feature that lets you kind of flatten out a whiteboard to draw on. And they're just great in like, 
all lighting conditions. Now again, the only difference between the 2 and the 2C is this little gimbal head here, which can then use to follow you around the room if you wish, or you know, if you're moving around, presenting something, or even if you're leaning back in your chair, it can kind of focus on you and zoom in as well. But both of these cameras are great cameras they are like head over heels way better than the like the built-in apple webcams on like a you know an ipad or a macbook pro now the only other one that i've used a handful of times is using uh, my actual iphone as my webcam which you can do wirelessly but you have to remember to you know a carry my iphone which i don't always carry i have to remember the magsafe mount i use to attach it onto whichever screen i'm using and if i remember both of those i need to also remember that my iPhone has enough charge to last the, you know, 30 or 60 minutes that I might be on a call for, which it just never does. So for now, like I said, I'm using the Insta360 Link 2 as my main camera. Now, firstly, headphones now. Now, I don't like to miss it, but I just reach for the AirPods Max right now. I don't know if it's because I know that I've spent like 500 pounds on a pair of headphones, so I feel like I have to use them. Or if it's just when traveling, I know that if I pick these up, then they will just work with my iPad Pro, which I also travel with, without having to like faff with, you know, pairing via Bluetooth. Something which after reviewing a ton of phones, a ton of headphones and tablets, can get a little tiring of like remembering which pair of headphones are paired to which devices. So again, take this recommendation with a uh, pinch of salt. Otherwise, I can also recommend the Sonos Aces. They've actually been an amazing pair of headphones to use over the past few months as well. And then for the speakers, I actually ended up going with the Edifier MR4s, which are, they're small, they're compact, uh, they're powerful enough for what I need. Now, the only thing I wish I did was just pop these up on some stands, just raise them up from the desk a little. Gonna do probably do that in the next uh, probably couple of months or so, if I can remember. Um, although that would then mean they are then stuck behind this ginormous screen I'm using right now. Um, and they are hooked up to the Focusrite uh, Scarlett Solo audio interface, which connects to the Mac Mini via one of those USB-C ports, which also then lets me hook up my Shure SM7B microphone, which I use for you know, these things, uh, video calls, uh, recording any voiceovers for these videos. It's just a really nice, really compact like audio setup. It doesn't take up too much space. It's not overpowered for what I need, and it just sounds great overall. And then the biggest of all the accessories, if you can even call it that, is my monitor. Now, I think that I might swap this monitor out this year. So this is the 57 inch Samsung Odyssey G9. Now it is a mini LED monitor. It runs at 240 Hertz when connected to my PC, but only 120 Hertz when connected to the Mac. Uh, it also has an extremely high resolution of 7180 by 2160, which sounds huge. It's kind of perfect for this size of screen. And this thing, this, this thing has been incredible to use, but it's huge and it's heavy, like so heavy. In fact, I had to find a whole new monitor arm, which thankfully I did with uh, this one from Secret Lab. And that works great. But when I went to CES in Las Vegas, like earlier this year, I was kind of expecting to see a newer version of this screen with maybe an OLED panel. So, you know, much lighter, much thinner, and of course, beautiful OLED colors. But instead, there has been zero updates to this monitor this year. Now, what I did see is an updated LG 45 inch Ultra Gear monitor, which fixed the one big issue I had with it with last year's model, which was just having really poor resolution. Now that also has USB-C with power delivery. So super easy to hook up to a laptop. I kind of wonder if I can get maybe two of those screens on this desk and, you know, have two 45 inch OLED screens side by side. I'm not actually sure. Uh, we'll actually see if that fits. But I actually made a whole buyer's guide about monitors, uh, specifically for productivity, which you can click on here. Now I'm also going to put together a gaming monitor guide. So subscribe for that one and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye bye.